This is the second series on what you should do when you acquire an old Mercedes Benz. You know, the first series had to do with doing a physical exam on the engine because I believe that's the most important thing to do. Now, the video series I recently did on this car had to do with a diesel engine, but a lot of those same principles apply to a gasoline engine older Mercedes. When you get one of these cars, check that engine out. Check it out thoroughly before you spend any more money or even spend any more time on the car. Now this one passed with flying colors. I'll put a link below in the description of this video to take you to that series. You can see how well this engine checked out. I was really surprised considering its age and mileage. But I believe the second most important thing you should go after once you've proven that you have a healthy engine is to go after the suspension and the brake system. That's safety related, so it's really important. Now you notice here what I've done. I've put this car up on jack stands. I've taken two wheels off, but I've left it on the wheels on the other side. I do not work on a car on four jack stands. I just don't do it. And when it's on jack stands, I don't get under the car, okay? Later on in this video, I'll be doing some fuel system work, and I'll show you what I do when I have to get under the car but I do one side at a time. I'm working outside the car, so if it happens to fall, it's not gonna fall on me. And I've got it securely positioned with two jack stands. I got these two wheels off, and now I'm going to inspect this entire area, the suspension, brakes, and so on, underneath these two sections. I won't be getting into the car. I'll do that probably tomorrow when I get it up to work on the fuel system. Then I can check the flex discs, things like the transmission rear mount and so on, things that are under the middle of the car, but I'm not gonna get under there today and check those things. We're gonna be focusing on this area inside the wheel wells. I'm gonna start making notes on what I have to fix and the parts I need to order. I'm gonna start with the brakes, and the first thing I wanna do is see if that caliper is dragging. So I'm opening the front door, and I'm gonna push really hard on the brake pedal. I mean, really hard, and I'm gonna release. And when I come back here, I should be able to turn this rotor. If this rotor does not move easily, it means my calipers are sticking, okay? All right, it's moving easily. Take a really close look at the pads. The pads are just under a quarter of an inch, maybe 3 16 so they still have some life. No heavy scoring, no large lip here at the end. So the rotor looks good. This looks like a replacement rotor. You know, I've got some rust around here that I'm gonna have to clean up when I put the wheel back on and put some antices on that. To inspect the emergency brake assembly, you have to remove the rear brake caliper. Now I've set this up and zip tied it to the sway bar here, but sometimes it's a real bearer to get the bolts out on these calipers, especially if you're working on the ground here. I use a breaker bar like this. Believe it or not, this breaker bar, I don't, get real good leverage there. So I always have a pipe handy like this. You get a breaker bar with a pipe and you can get these caliper bolts off without working up a lot of sweat. So we got those off. The other problem is you may have a rotor here that's stuck to the hub. And if it is, it won't come off. This one's loose, so I'll just kind of demonstrate this, but you can wrap this with a hammer right in here like this. See, to knock some of that rust loose. Don't, don't bang on the edges. You could damage the rotor. So a lot of times banging right here in the hub area can get these loose. And then we're gonna slide this off. So I don't like the looks of that rust. Obviously when the new rotor was installed, they didn't use any anisease compound in here to prevent this from rusting and seizing on. That's why sometimes these are so hard to get off, okay? Another reason why you want to use anises between the hub and the rotor, just a light film. You've seen my other videos on this and also a light film around here to prevent the wheel from sticking. And we'll set that down. Now I'm going to inspect the shoe. These are like conventional old style brake shoes. And when you push on the pedal, of course they spread out and they clamp on the inside of the rotor here. So you want to inspect for scoring on the inside of the brake rotor here. That looks fine. These still have some life to them, but I'm looking up here at this one and it started to loosen up right at the top. So this is something that's gonna go on my list, although it's not something that I'm gonna do right away. It will be something I will need to do in the future. The other thing I'm looking at is the flexible brake hose. 
I mean, these hardly ever get changed, and they're so important for these old cars. As I've said before in other videos, these will get plugged up and uh, not allow your brakes to work properly or even overheat your brakes because they'll act like a check valve. This is such a common issue that I carry <laughs> these brand new uh, flexible brake hoses in the shop. I just have a, a selection of them along with a good high quality DOT4 brake fluid. This is low moisture absorption brake fluid. And I'm sure when I show you the brake fluid up in the engine compartment, it's not gonna be very pretty. So we're gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that today, but all four flexible brake hoses will get changed. These should be changed about every 15 to 18 years, regardless of mileage. I remember when I was driving this initially, we had a bad clunk, so I'm checking that out. Just that. That's where you get a lot of clunking on these old Mercedes that use these ball joint type sway bar links. So that's going on my list. Sway bar links will need to get changed fairly soon. It's really hard to test these axles unless you remove them. But I'm checking the hub bearing for play. I don't feel any excessive play here. And both boots look good and the rear end is really dry. I love it when I look under one of these old Mercedes and I see the boots are still intact and not torn and that there's no wetness sitting around that rear differential. The shocks, oh, they're aftermarket rider shocks, okay? <laughs> So I know the shocks are bad on this car. They're gonna to have to get replaced. I'm looking at the exhaust hangers down here. They look pretty good. So I'm gonna to add to my list brake shoes, flexible brake lines, rear shocks. And at this point, the tires look great. I'll show you the tire in the front because I wanna talk about analyzing tire wear. This is looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this. So we're gonna go ahead and move on now to the front wheel. Taking a really close look at your tires is also an important part of this inspection. I not only look at the tires for signs of wear, but I look for signs of cracking in here between the treads and sidewall cracking. Sometimes you might have good tread, but the tire is so old, it could be deteriorating internally. And I said earlier, you can tell by tire wear patterns whether you got problems with the front end. Well, that's the case if you have old tires, but look, these are almost like brand new Michelins and I'm not getting any indication as far as these tires, how well this front end is performing as far as looseness or being out of a line. So the tires are not telling me very much other than the fact that I'm very happy. I don't have to buy tires for this car. Now let's take a close look at the brake assembly. As I did in the rear, the first thing I'm going to check is to see whether these calipers are sticking. So I'm just checking smoothness and freedom of movement on this front rotor. Now I'll get in the car and I'm gonna push hard on the brake and then I'll immediately come back and check, look at that. It's as free as it was before I went and pushed on that pedal. So if you're getting a lot of stiff drag after pushing on the pedal, that means that either one of these pistons in the caliper are sticking, but don't assume that can be the only reason. The other reason is you could have a problem with a plugged flexible brake hose. As I mentioned on the rear one, these can get so deteriorated internally that they'll act like a check valve. And what I mean is when you push on the pedal, it'll force fluid into the caliper you know, causing the brakes to grab. But when you release the pedal, the fluid won't come back and it'll keep the caliper on. So when you have dragging brakes, don't just assume it's going to only be a caliper, particularly on a 20 plus year old car. I'm looking at these hoses, they're definitely on the list. The pads are almost 80% and the rotors are looking in great shape. Just a very slight lip on the edge there, but it's well within specification. So I don't have to worry about that. I bet somebody's been in here and done some work on the front wheel bearing because that's not a factory <laughs> grease cap on there. But what I'm gonna do now is because this is a preliminary inspection to come up with a list, I'm only looking for safety issues. I'm not gonna take the bearings out right now and re-grease them and check uh, proper tightness, but I will check for play and making sure they spin and don't make noise. That's really important on this initial inspection. If you've got a bearing that's making a rumbling sound or you got a lot of slop, clunk, 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 that's something you'll want to attend to right away. But I'll probably take a look at the bearings themselves and the grease in the bearings 
when I get this car ready to replace the flexible brake hose. Now let's take a close look at a couple things up in here. I'm seeing something I don't like. You got to remember that these old W123 chassis Mercedes are well over 30 years old. So they're going to have some wear points in the front suspension, particularly if they have over 200,000 miles. And one of them is right here. This part up here is called the upper control arm. And I'm seeing a boot that is torn. So I bet you the ball joint in there is rattling. I can jack up on the suspension and relieve the tension. I can't check it now. But when I see a boot like this, I don't even bother going any further. And I'm looking up in there at the inboard rubber bushing, and it looks torn up too. This is what they look like. You can see this bushing here, and that's the one I'm seeing looks like it's torn up. I'll take this nut off here so you can see how this ball joint works. And as you can see here, they should be tight. And I'll show you this one when I take these off. By the way, this is something that can be done by the DIY mechanic. It's not a beginner job, but you don't have to remove the spring to do this. But there are some safety considerations that you have to be aware of. So you want to do your homework. Our kits come with some instructions. I'll be doing another video on replacing these on this 300D sometime here in the near future. So I'm looking at the shock absorbers. You know, this was a really bouncy front end. These are some cheap aftermarket shock absorbers that have been adapted to fit this W123. I do want to get under and inspect all the tie rod ends and the uh, steering. I want to check these uh, control rods, but I don't want to get under the car right now. I told you I wasn't going to get under the car when it's on jack stands. So what I'm going to do now is I've got my list. I've got a lot of things written down. I'm going to make note to check wheel bearing preload and the grease in the wheel bearings in the future when I do these flexible brake hoses. I'll probably do that, this, the upper control arm, replace the shocks, do it all in one operation. I'm going to wrap up this video with a couple of reminders and tips. Number one, when you reinstall this caliper, do not forget to use blue thread locking compound on the bolts and torque these bolts to the proper specification. Then be sure and clean the outside of the hub right in here and right along this edge of the rotor and you can see I've wiped a thin film of anises. So anytime in the future this wheel is just going to come right off and I've done the same thing on the back side of the wheel here. I've cleaned the face, the mounting face of that wheel and then I've painted the wheels. Now this is a real good time to paint your wheels because you've got them off the car and you know me I just can't stand ugly dirty alloy wheels. So we're going to mount this wheel up on here and I have my trusty wheel mounting pin. Isn't that slick? And I can just take a break, you know, I'm real <sighs> tired. So I'll go ahead and start these lug bolts by hand. I always start it by hand. Don't count on a impact wrench to just drive these in. And we'll get these snugged up, then we'll lower the car down and always use a torque wrench when you torque your lug bolts, okay? Be able to pull the jack stand out. This is what I use on all my jack stands. I've done a couple other videos on this, but we have this really super reinforced rubber that we sell as a kit on my website. And I put this on all my jack stands like this. This rubber piece can prevent the car from slipping off the jack stand. It also helps to prevent damage underneath and any type of scratching of the metal which could cause future rust. So this is something really handy to have for your jack stands. I've had requests from a, a number of viewers to post more pictures and tell more stories about my flying experiences in New Guinea in the 1970s. So I thought I'd start doing this kind of at the end of the video. I was going through my pictures the other night and I came across this one and I had to chuckle. And I noticed there's something funny looking on top of my wing. Take a close look at it. Zoom in on that. Does anybody know what that is? And can anybody tell me why I would have a can like that on top of my aircraft wing? 